Did you ever think tonic water could become an ethereal pad? Or that a bottle could become a fat 808 bass? I'll show you how to make these sounds and a lot more as we turn random sounds into playable instruments using the simple sampler and some effects in Soundation. And you can get all the presets for free by clicking the link in the description. Let's get started. To record your sounds, you can use something like your phone's built-in microphone. Now you want to try objects with different materials and different ways of producing sound, like scraping, striking, plucking, smashing, anything. Or find objects that make sound on their own, like mechanical stuff. Stay on the lookout for distinct notes. These sounds can easily be turned into melodic instruments, but there are also ways to make sounds without a clear pitch more tonal, but more about that later in the video. These are the drums from the last video. They were made from random sounds, just like we'll be doing in this video. I'll use the drums as a starting point and make a full beat using the melodic instruments we'll be creating. But I will remove this percussion sound, which was made from a cassette player switch. Since it has a clear pitch, we're going to be using it as a melodic instrument instead. Check out the last video if you want to see how it was made. Drag and drop the sample from the file manager onto this area in Soundation, which will open it up in the simple sampler. Since we've already done the sound design in the last video, I will simply increase the release so that it rings out more. Add a delay to get some echoes. This is what it sounds like playing some arpeggios. Now let's create a new sound. I'll start with something simple, plucking a note on a kalimba. A kalimba, as you know, is already a musical instrument, so it's creating a clear musical pitch, so we don't need to do that much sound design. However, the sample does have some background noise and some humming that I want to get rid of. If I add it to the sampler right away and play it at the original pitch, it's not that noticeable. But as soon as I add some dynamic effects and play higher notes, it becomes super apparent. We can fix this with EQ. However, adding an EQ directly to this channel will not work because the EQ is static and it won't follow along as the pitches change. So instead, I will import the sample to the arrangement area, add a parametric EQ, and turn on the spectrum analyzer. Here we can see the fundamental frequency of the kalimba. And down here, there is a lot of noise and humming. To clean this up, activate the high pass filter, drag it to just before the fundamental, and make it steeper. We can also clean up the high frequency noise with a low pass filter and some of the upper mids. Now, make sure it's soloed, set the loop regions, and export it. Then open it in the sampler again. It's a little sharp and out of tune, so I'll tune it down a bit. Check out our full walkthrough of the simple sampler to learn about how to tune. Increase the release to let it ring out. Now for the effects. Add reverb for a sense of space. Use high pass and low pass filters to shape the tone. You can, for example, make it sound more lo-fi like this. Add a delay to get some echoes. And finally, a compressor for a fatter and more sustained sound. And this is what this kalimba sounds like now. The next sound I'll turn into an instrument is hitting a glass pitcher. When you're getting sounds from objects that are not made to be instruments, sometimes they have some not so pleasant frequencies in there. And that's the case here. To fix it, again, you can clean it up with a parametric EQ first to get rid of those pesky frequencies. This is what it sounds like without the EQ. You can really hear the dissonance in there with the frequencies fighting each other. And this is with the EQ. Much clearer. After the cleanup, you can export it and load it into the simple sampler. Adjust the release to make it ring out. Add reverb. Compression. Filters. 
And you got yourself a nice, glassy, percussive instrument. Now let's turn the sound of blowing into a bottle into a nice lead. I've loaded it up in the simple sampler and tuned it already. Adjust the start point to right before the sound. To lengthen the sound, enable the loop. Change the loop direction to ping pong, give it some crossfade, and change the release mode to loop. Then adjust the yellow handles to fine tune the loop and find the sweet spot. To turn it into more of a lead instrument, I'll change the playback mode to mono. I'll also turn on the glide and adjust the time. Add filters to shape the tone. Add a phaser to get some more movement in the sound. I'm using it for some sort of facey vibrato. Then add some delay and reverb for more ambience. And there you have a bottle lead. Moving on, let's turn the same sound into an 808 bass. Clone the channel, delete all the effects, change the octave to a lower register, and change the start point for a more immediate attack. Then increase the release for that classic 808 fall off. Add a low pass filter to focus in on the bass. Add some distortion to bring out the tone and make it more aggressive. If the bass is too overpowering, you can add an equalizer and take it down a notch. Boom, a bottle 808. Sometimes the sound won't have a clear pitch, like this sample of pouring tonic water. This sound is mostly noise, but we can turn that noise into something tonal quite easily. Add the sample to the arrangement area and add a parametric EQ. Then choose one of the resonator presets. It will then boost the frequencies of that specific note. In this case, an A note. You can turn off the filters if you don't like what it's adding. And if you want a stronger effect, you can simply duplicate the parametric EQ by selecting it in the bottom panel and pressing Ctrl or Command and D. If it's too strong of an effect, you can bring down the gain and use high pass and low pass filters to shave off the bass and treble. Then export the audio and load it into the simple sampler. Let's turn it into a bubbly pad. Set the start point to a good spot. Activate the loop, give it some crossfade, change the release mode to loop and adjust the loop handles for a seamless transition. Increase the release for a longer tail. It's overly bright, so let's soften it up with a wub filter. I'll go with the cassette preset and then bring down the resonance a bit. This will filter out the bass and treble with a bandpass filter. I want the pad to be really wide, so I will add a delay, choose the stereoizer preset, and adjust the time on the right side for a stronger effect. What this does is that the right channel will be delayed from the left channel, resulting in a wider sound. Then add a reverb to make it more ambient. Ta-da, a tonic pad. Now I want to create another pad from the motor sound of this out of season Christmas decoration. Add the sample to the sampler, change the octave if need be, enable and adjust the loop just like before, increase the attack and release to soften it up, use a parametric EQ to filter out the bass and treble for a light and mellow sound. Add a phaser to get some whooshy movement.
add a delay for some stereo widening trick as before. For slower sounds, you can use a longer delay. Then top it off with a washy reverb. And there you have a motorized pad. The last instrument will come from scraping a paper holder. This sound may not sound very tonal at first glance, but if you take a small chunk from it, you can start to hear the tonality. I've already tuned it to a G. Decrease the sustain for a tapered sound. This sound is very harmonically rich and I want to make it a more pure G. To do this, add a parametric EQ. Choose a resonator preset, in my case, a G. If you turn on the analyzer, you can see that this is the main frequency. I'll turn off all other filters and use the high pass and low pass filters to get rid of most other frequencies, just like before. Get a stronger effect by duplicating it with Ctrl or Command D. And add a reverb for ambience. I want these effects to be baked into the sample, so I'll export this with one note playing and then resample it by importing it back into the sampler. Now adjust the envelope and add some effects. I'll add a delay and a phaser. Here's the finished sound. Let's listen to the full beat with all instruments now. There you have it, eight home-cooked melodic instruments with some obvious and some not-so-obvious sources. Remember, check the link in the description to get all of these sounds for free. And don't be afraid to experiment with your own instruments. Let's see what you can make.